Welcome to Goldsboro, North Carolina. Live internet tonight, and we are thrilled to be here and to be on this broadcast with all of you across the world and those who are here tonight. And sitting beside me is my husband of in two months, three months, will be 71 years. So we are thrilled to be here yeah. tonight. Amen. And so we're going to be talking about walking on the water. Walking on the water of life in trauma. So you have your outlines, and these are scriptures that when you read them, you read them, you study them, you meditate on them, you speak them out of your mouth. And then as you meditate on these scriptures, you can hear God say, come, and you can walk on the water of life through the traumas of life. And I'm here to tell you, that these scriptures have brought me through five months and two or three days when I fell February 14th and I broke, my hip broke and my leg in three places. And we, God just has done a great work. I am walking now. I'm still holding to the walker. But God gave me a message and said, Jesus died to do what men can't do. And I say, and it exploded in my spirit. And I said, dear God, that is mine. That is for me. And so I'm back at church now. I'm teaching again in church. And we're just so thankful to share with you tonight that when you get these seven attributes of the Holy Spirit, and I kind of get tickled because I did not think that there were seven of them until Diane and I were fixed in the printouts. But that's a great thing anyway. I don't know how many of you here or in the world think about what power you really have right at your fingertips. When you pick the Bible up, you've got them all there, and God will fulfill his word. And so tonight on this broadcast, I want to give you scriptures that brought me through and it brought me through because he took the pain. It looked like I was in pain, but the war, the Bible says we're in the world, we're not of the world. And I had known that scripture a long time, but now I know what it means. Because, and later I might show, share that with you if God leaves. But when you get these scriptures tonight and get them working in your life, then you can walk on the water of life through traumas because they have power. And you know, we don't think about that the Holy Spirit lives in us. And he's there for a reason. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So I want you to take your Bibles or your outline, and I want to start with John 14 and 15, and this is from the Amplified Bible. It says, if you really love me, that is a key statement. If you really love me, you will keep my commandments and obey my commandments. So... This statement right here can show us if we really love God. And then it says, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another. 
and listen to the seven attributes of the Holy Spirit. He is our comforter. He is our counselor. He is our helper. He is our intercessor. He is our advocate. He is our strengthener. And he is our standby. And so these seven attributes of the Holy Spirit are power, but the power comes from the Holy Spirit living in us. I heard a minister say one time that God told him that the greatest power he ever released on the earth was when he released, when he released power through the Holy Spirit to raise Jesus from the dead. And think about it. I mean, we have that same Holy Spirit living in us. And he's there to fulfill what he does. He is our, he comforts us. And in verse, um, we see, in, I want to, in Amplified, it gives you another place in John 14, and this is Amplified I, in Classic. I have told you these things while I'm still with you. And the Comforter, the Counselor, the Helper, the Intercessor, the Advocate, the Strengthener, the Standby, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name in my place to represent me and act on my behalf. He will teach you all things and he will cause you to recall, will remind you of, bring to your remembrance everything I have told, that everything I have told you. So when you start thinking about the things that the Holy Spirit will do for us. And I can tell you this because in rehab for 22 days and nights, then these scriptures is what brought me through that seems so short. In fact, my husband spent 24 nights with me just sleeping in on the chair. And about two months ago, he said that was a short time. And so for him to think that that was a short time, then these scriptures had just came alive. I, I cannot tell you what they meant. We never turned the TV on. We never, um, we didn't do anything except in our spare time after rehab. At night, we studied the scriptures that we're teaching you tonight. And so in John 14 and verse 26, uh, and on your outline, I can have it. Um, and I want to do 25, John 14, 25. I have told you these things while I am still with you. But the Comforter, the Counselor, the helper, the intercessor, the advocate, the strengthener, the standby, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will stand in my name, in my place, to represent me, act on my behalf. He will teach you all things, and he will cause you to recall, will remind you of, bring to your remembrance everything I have told you. So two places in John 14, he'll tell you, he's telling us the same thing. So now let's take them one by one. Comfort. You know, all of us need comforting at some time or other. When trauma comes, when difficulties come, when the devil comes against us, then we need comfort. And the Holy Spirit is right there. Now, Jesus gave me a song one night, Learning to Lean. And so one of the verses says, 
it, the Holy Spirit will help you if you ask. You see, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman, and he's not going to help you unless you ask. So they said, if you ask him, he with you each task, he will help you. And I have put this to work. I can tell you it is truth. It worked for me, and God is no respect of person, and it will work for you. So in Isaiah 41, and the Amplified, it says, Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. And God says, comfort people. The Holy Spirit comforts us. And then there are people that come to us that need to be comforted, that need comfort. So this is just one of the attributes of the Holy Spirit, the first one. And many times we need comfort, don't we? And we, the Holy Spirit is in us. We don't have to travel to get some of God to help us, but He is in us. And also in John 14, and I love this because we have just read how the um, how about the comf the seven attributes, and then in verse twenty seven it says, "Peace I leave with you." Do you have a time that you lay down at night and peace just won't come? Well, you've got the Holy Spirit, and He is waiting for you to ask him to help you with your sleep. And last night, I was meditating on this lesson, and I, won't, I was not, you know how Satan, maybe you don't know, but I know, he'll come in on your mind. And I had to move him out, and I said, Lord, help me to go to sleep, because I want to be, alive and well tomorrow, and I don't want to be energized, I don't want to be tired or sleepy, and I went off to sleep. He, it is real, it is just real. And in verse 27, after he's told us these seven attributes of the Holy Spirit, he said, peace I leave with you, my own peace, I give, I give and bequest to you, not as the world give, give unto you. Do not let your heart be troubled, number one, neither let it be afraid, number two. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated. Do you ever get agitated with people or things going on? Neither let them be afraid. Excuse me. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed, and do not permit yourself to be fearful, intimidated, and cowardly and unsettled. So this is how you have peace. But maybe you can. I can't. I have to ask the Holy Spirit to help me keep these things. Don't let me be agitated, troubled, concerned, disturbed, um, fearful. We need to know that the Holy Spirit living in us is there to help us. And when we don't give him the word, he's not going to help us. We've got to ask him to help us and get the word inside of us. So the first one was comfort. The second one is counselor in the Amplified and the Classic. It says, I, the Lord, will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. How much more do we need than scriptures that tell us this? And then we have the power 
of the Holy Spirit that lives in us to help us. And here we said the Lord, He's going to instruct you. He's going to teach you in the way you should go. He said, I will counsel you with my eye upon you. And then, and then he says, be like a, do not, excuse me, do not be like the horse or the mule, which like understanding, which must have their mouths held firm with bit and bridle or else they will not come with you. So we're not to be stubborn, but we are to. You know, if you're going to have God in you working every day, 24-7, we need to be obedient to what we hear from God's Word. The Bible, James says, be doers of the Word, and not hear us only. So we need to understand that we have the Word, and it cost us. Jesus paid the price, and we, He has blessed us and given us power through His Word to live a life that will glorify Him. And then we have Comforter, comfort and counselor, then we have helper. And in Psalm 121, verse 1 and 2, an amplified classic edition, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills around Jerusalem to, to secrete Mount Zion and Mount Moriah from whence shall my help come? My help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. I think all of us tonight know that our help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth, because God gives us help when we can't help ourselves. And see, that's why He sent the Holy Spirit to help us, to comfort us when we're in trouble, to counsel us. You know, when you go, there are counselors everywhere, and people, even Christian people, go to counselors. When you've got the power of the Holy Spirit living in you, and you have God's Word, and you can do great things because God has already fixed everything we need to help us to live a life of power that people, that will glorify His name. This is why we are on this earth. We are to live to glorify His name. And now we come to an intercessor, an intercessor. In Romans 8, 26 and 27, in the King James Bible, it says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we all, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. So the Holy Spirit is praying for us. He is our intercessor. And this is in Romans 8, 26 and 27, and it's in the King James Bible. And so you see, we have, he, had, he is our comforter, he is our counselor, he is our helper, and now we come, he's even praying for us. And then in verse 27 it says, and he that searcheth the heart. We need to stop a minute and think about our heart. What is in our heart? You know, it says, And he that searcheth the hearts, knowing what is the mind of the Spirit. 
because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. What power we have to have the Holy Spirit interceded for you and I. And he does this because God has sent him to live in us. When Jesus went back to heaven, he said, I'm not going to leave you as orphans, but I'm going to give you someone to take my place. And the Holy Spirit that lives in us just quickens it, makes alive our lives to glorify God. And now we get to one that is a refrigerator scripture. And on your outline tonight, Diane graciously showed me, and I mentioned to her when we were fixing these printouts, I said, this is a refrigerator scripture. And the Holy Spirit gave her the message, and she fixed it on the outline. Um, and it is amazing what this scripture is. Um, if we're going to live God's way, we're going to have to know the Advocate. We're going to have to have the Holy Spirit to show us when we sin. I think we know when we sin. But the Holy Spirit will give you an He will give you a little nugging, a little nudge, I guess, when we think, say, and do something wrong. You know, our mind will run rapid if we aren't careful. And we, the more of these attributes that we have in us, the more we can overcome the evil one that throws thoughts into our minds that causes us trouble. And in 1 John 1, 9 and 10, and, and I want to read 9 first. This is in the Amplified and Classic Edition. If we freely admit that we've sinned, have you ever done something wrong and you didn't want to admit it? You know, we feel like we live above sinning. We feel like that we are living God's way. But I don't know but one person that was perfect. And we all sin and make mistakes every day. But when we freely admit that we have sinned, that is the key to me <coughs> for this refrigerator scripture is if we freely admit we have sinned. Maybe we've said something to someone that's wrong, and you can see it on their face how you have heard them. Do you think that's sin? Do you think that this is God's way? But look how quickly you can, the Holy Spirit will erase that for you if you freely admit that you have sinned. And then you confess your sin. We have to confess our sins. And this scripture means a lot to me because I think about, I don't know about any of you across the world or here, but I have a battle every day with the devil. God helps me, the Holy Spirit helps me when I ask him. But there, there, um, you know, we don't realize how much we hurt other people and we never know it. And in Psalm 119, 
1, 6 to 5, it says, Great peace have they that love the law, and nothing shall offend them. That is a powerful scripture that shows us when we don't have great peace, then evidently we've been offended. Great peace have they that love the law. We can love the law. We can have great peace. And when we do, nothing shall offend us. And so we need to think about our lives tonight in line with the Holy Spirit and His attributes and see where we stand mentally as well as spiritually and see how short we are coming up because we have... Uh, we have an enemy out walking to and fro upon the earth, seeking whom he may devour. And so if we freely admit that we have sinned and confess our sins, I have one sitting beside me tonight that knows how much I confess mine. When I think something or I say something, I am quick to repent. Because I know that if I freely admit that I've sinned, even though it's, we say, little sins, little or big, sin is sin, and we need to get it out of the way. And we have right here in one of these attributes a great scripture that tells us, let's don't say, forgive me, Lord but help us to admit what we have done or said wrong and get it right with God so that these attributes can be alive every day in our lives, 24-7. He is faithful and just. If we freely admit that we have sinned and we confess our sin, He is faithful and just, true His to his own nature and promises to forgive, dismiss our lawlessness and forgive our sin and continue. Listen at this now. And you know, this is a, such a powerful scripture, but so often we as God's children and Christian people, we say things that are strong or we do things that are strong and not only say and do, but do you know there is a body language. Our body speaks. There are things that you can say that might hurt someone, but it's the way you say it. I believe that we can speak anything to anybody. And if we are, if our heart was right with God, it will be the way we say it. You think about it. If someone has aggravated you and agitated you, as we've already said in John 14, don't be agitated. And when we, when we have people that push us too far, sometimes, I don't use this saying, but I heard someone say, somebody push my button today. Well, you know, what are we going to do? Are we going to keep having push my button? Are we going to... Get rid of that button so that nobody can push it. I mean, these are everyday things that come in our lives that we don't think about. But we have a promise. We can freely ask for forgiveness and confess our sin. And he is faithful and just of his own nature and promises to forgive our lawlessness, dismiss our lawlessness, and then listen, and continually, 
cleanse us from all unrighteousness continually. You think what a prize that is for us to think about confessing our sin, no matter what sin it is, confess it. And then you've got this promise in 1 John 1 and 9, after you confess your sin, you freely realize you've sinned, you confess it, and then he's going to forgive you because that's his nature and promise. And then he's going to forgive you of that sin. And then just think, let your mind think that he is continually cleansing us from all unrighteousness. Continually cleansing us from all unrighteousness. Everything not in conformity to his will in purpose, thought, and action. I want to tell you tonight, wherever you are listening to this program, when you turn your TV on and you hear things that are not in line with God's Word, do you soak it up and never think that that's a sin? There are things coming on the news, on TV, programs that we are have to, we are we set our recorder or we don't want to miss them when God's word's right there or a preaching is so close that on the computer that you can listen to and yet we go about our everyday life and we think we are free from sin. And these scriptures never cross our mind. I want to tell you, I feel that one day, and I am at 89, I've just celebrated my 89th birthday, and he's close, he's celebrated 90. But that, we don't go by age, but what I'm saying is that none of us know when our time is up, we are one heartbeat from heaven or hell, wherever we're going. And we need to keep these scriptures, admit when we are wrong, and correct them and get out of the way of living a way that is not God's way. Because God's word should be first place in our hearts. And he says here, I am showing you how to get sin out of your life so that you can live my way. So he's going to continually cleanse us from all unrighteousness, everything not into conformity to his will in purpose, thought, and action. Now, now, let me, Let's go to verse 10. It says, If we say, claim, we have not sinned, we contradict his word and make him out to be false and a liar, and his word is not in us. The divine message of the gospel is not in our hearts is not in our hearts. My, 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 that's, um, that's the scripture that we need to search out and we need to take inventory of our uh, minds and actions and everything about our life every day. 24-7, so that we will be ready when that time comes 
for us to move on to the great reward that we have when we live God's way. Uh, those are all powerful scriptures. And then we see he's our strength. Do you ever stop and think where your strength comes? I mean, when we get up in the morning, we're so thankful that when we get up in the morning, we have strength to do what we need to do. And if we have work to do, we have strength to do that. Do we ever take it for granted that we just, is God going to do it anyway? So, Holy Spirit, I don't need you to help me with all these. Now, maybe you never say that, but this is what it says. I believe when we don't let the Holy Spirit. Let me stop in the here and say, the Holy Spirit is a, a person to us. The more you study these scriptures tonight, these seven attributes will come alive in your life. And then when trauma hits you or something bad takes place, then you've got the Holy Spirit if you have these scriptures, these attributes working in your life, then they will take control of that situation. And I'll tell you, when you've lived through it, you know what these scriptures do. And I have lived through it in five months, and I know what they will do. And I just want to stop here for a moment and share with you um, how God really used them. When we were in rehab, um, my husband said, I want you to help me memorize the seven attributes of God. And so at night we worked on these so that he could memorize them and he has memorized them now. And while we were there, we weren't looking at the news or programs on TV. Nurse came in and said, you don't even have your TV on. And we said, no, we, uh, we're not looking at it tonight. And it's strange when people are in a place like that, confined with and you're not looking at TV. But this is your strength. And so these work, and just to highlight one of the highlights of that trauma that we had, I, I was not in pain other than coming out down the doorsteps to the EMS. But God's word was alive because he had, gave, he had given me a scripture that morning that said Jesus just can do what, God, what men can't do. And so, you know, I was not, I was not struggling. I didn't struggle. I had... I had these attributes alive in my life, not as much as I'm going to have them, but I had them enough that took me through. And I just want to share one thing to all the bro on this broadcast that highlighted what these scriptures really meant. Because I was not on earth, God kept me. Uh, I was on the earth, but I won't on the earth. And I know that's hard to understand, but it comes from what I'm teaching, and I, that's why I was that way. Um, but I was up in a bluish-gray cloud, and God 
drop me into the operating room and I heard one of the nurses say, she needs two pints of blood. And then I heard one say, it's her right leg. And I said, no ma'am, it's my left leg. And she said, this paper says it's her right leg. And I said, no ma'am, it's my left leg. And God just moved me out. And we were at rehab probably two weeks or more before the Lord revealed to me what had happened. And so I asked my husband, and he can tell you what happened. He was in the waiting room. The doctor came in uh, with some papers. He seemed to be a little frustrated. And uh, he said that uh, this paper says it's the right leg, and she says it's the left leg. And I said, it is the left leg. He said, well, you've signed a statement stating it's the left leg. I said, yes, sir, I will. So we signed the paper. So you see, you had, had God not dropped me there because in the waiting room, they felt like everything was fine. But God dropped me back at the time that kept both legs from being hurt. I tell you that to tell you that this is real. It's alive and it's real and it will work for anybody. But God bless me and it has been a wonderful experience because God kept us. He strengthened us. That's what we're fixing to say. He strengthened us. In Isaiah 41, 10, he says, Fear not. I didn't have one bit of fear. I had no fear any of the time. And he says, Fear not. There is nothing to fear, for I am with you. Do not look around you in terror and be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen and harden you to difficulties. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will hold you up and retain you with my victorious right hand of righteous, rightness and justice. So you see here, he, strength, he strengthened us. And then stand by, and I could take more time with that, but I think, I, you know, I don't like a clock. I don't think God has to call out, but I'm going to be obedient as best I can. Then the standby from Exodus 14, 13, and 14 says, Moses told the people, Fear not, stand still, firm, comfort. Confide undismayed. And see the salvation of the Lord, which he, is work, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians you have seen today, you will never see again. When we have these working in us, the Egyptians was a form of the devil. And the next verse says, the Lord will fight for you. And he did fight for me, for us. And you shall hold your peace and remain at rest. Read them, study them, meditate on them, speak them out your mouth, meditate on them 24-7, and hear God say, come and you can walk on the water through the trauma of life. So tonight we have seen how God can bless and do great and mighty things for us. So we want to know that the standby will help us to overcome anything coming our way. So we are blessed to be here tonight, and we thank you and praise you for tuning in to the broadcast. And you can, if you've been blessed tonight, just just uh, do what he always says that night. If you've been blessed. And so we bless you and thank you for the broadcast tonight. Thank you and bless you.